In this video, I'm going to be going over some different designs of Multi-Leaf Collimator, or MLC, and some of the issues associated with each. Multi-Leaf Collimators are a pair of mobile radiation shields, or JAWS, that have been divided into sections that can live independently. They're controlled automatically by computer, so you can deliver treatments that require lots of different beam shapes without having to enter the room and adjust it manually. This saves a lot of time compared with using blocks, which require someone to enter the room and change them manually every time you want to change a beam shape. They can also be moved during the delivery of a radiation beam in order to deliver finely tailored dose distributions. This method of treatment is known as Intensity Modulated Radiotherapy. The MLCs sold by different linear accelerator manufacturers have very different designs. Dividing a jaw into mobile sections requires that small gaps be left between the leaves. This allows them to move past each other, but it also allows radiation to sneak through. So a radiation beam profile measured below an MLC like this would have little peaks below the gaps between the leaves. This is known as interleaf leakage. In practice, leaves are designed to reduce interleaf leakage. The two different major vendors approach this differently. When looked at front on, varying leaves look like this. So in this diagram, the leaves will be moving either towards or away from them. The leaves have a little protrusion, or tongue, which fits into a groove in an adjacent leaf. This allows them to move past one another, but it means that radiation doesn't have a clear path through the gap between the MLC leaves. This provides extra shielding and helps to reduce the interleaf leakage, although it does still exist. Elector leaves look a bit more like this, with a different design but the same idea in mind. What these leaf types have in common is if you look at them from the top down, as far as the radiation is concerned, there's three regions. There's two thin ones on either side, so the thickness of the leaf here is reduced by the presence of the group, and the tongue, which is much thinner than the centre of the leaf, which is the thick part. The two of these next to each other, the thin parts overlap because the tongue sits inside the groove and we get a full leaf thickness. If one of these leaves moves out into the field slide, this previously interlocked thin part becomes exposed. So if we deliver some radiation, this exposed area here gets a fairly high dose. In this area is only partly shielded, it gets a low dose. In this area beneath the thick part of the leaf gets none. Now if we move out this other leaf and deliver some dose. This part now receives a high dose. This part receives a little bit more dose because it's thin. And this part receives none or very little because it's under a thick portion of the leaf. So if we put the leaf out of the way, we see that we get two regions of high dose and one in the middle with a lower dose. That's because there's always a thin part of the leaf in the way of the beam. This is known as a tongue and groove effect. It means that if leaves move in isolation through the field, there's always an area between adjacent leaves that will be underdosed. The two linac vendors also differ in how they position their MLC. Remember that linear accelerators have two sets of secondary collimated jaws. One set is positioned above the other, as I've shown here. To make it a bit more clear, this is how they would look if you look down upon them from above. They're positioned to move at 90 degrees to one another. The bottom jaws move this way, and the upper jaws move this way. Elector substitute one of these sets of jaws for their MLC. They essentially divide one pair of jaws up into MLC leaves. They include their MLC as a secondary collimator. Varian, on the other hand, add an MLC separately below the secondary collimator jaws. It becomes a tertiary collimator. These two approaches both have their advantages. Secondary MLCs are closer to the X-ray target. This means they don't have to move as far to shape fields, so they can shape fields quite quickly. The reason behind this is purely geometric. If we want to shape a radiation field to fit this target, Using a collimator that's far away from the beam source requires a gap that's quite large. But if we were to use a secondary collimator which is closer to the beam source, we could use a much smaller gap. If we wanted to alter our beam shape to fit a smaller target, the leaves of the more distant collimator would have to move a much larger distance than the leaves of the one that's closer. Because you're not adding an extra layer of jaws to your treatment head, it can be a fair bit smaller, which can offer more freedom in how we position patients during treatment. There's more room to have patients do things like have their arms up without having them being hit as a linac gantry rotates. The advantages of a tertiary MLC stem from the fact that you still have two intact jaws above the MLC. This means that the MLC can be thinner, since the jaws above can be used to block excess radiation. They can also be used to reduce leakage between leaves, so tertiary MLCs tend to have a lower interleaf leakage. And since both of those jaws are still there and functional, you can still make focused rectangular fields. I'm going to go into what that means on the next slide. You can also still use a linac to deliver electron beams, which require the secondary collimated jaws to be in very specific positions. I've mentioned before that secondary collimated jaws tend to move in a circular arc that allows their faces to remain parallel to the beam's direction of travel. Collimators that do this are said to be focused. It's important that we do this because it allows us to maintain a sharp beam edge, or a narrow beam penumbra, which helps us to minimise doses to normal tissues outside of treatment targets. An unfocused design, so a jaw moving horizontally through a field produces a wider beam edge. This is because portions of the beam are quite easily able to take short paths through the jaw as they do near the lower edge. Variant and elector MLCs are focused in only one direction, so only one dimension of the leaves remains parallel to the beam at all times. If you look at the face of an MLC, you'll see that the leaves are focused like this, which prevents each leaf from blurring the field in this direction as it blocks part of the beam. But looking at the MLC from side on, the leaves follow horizontal paths, so in this direction they're unfocused. Because one dimension of the MLC is focused and the other is not, these are known as single-focused MLCs. These MLC leaves move horizontally because a focused drive mechanism takes up a lot of space in the treatment head. And when the treatment head takes up more space, it means less space for the patient. The method used to minimize the negative effect of the unfocused MLC design on the beam edge is something that Varian and Elector actually agree on. 
If MLC leaves had a rectangular tip, the angle at which radiation moved through their faces would vary depending on the position of the leaf in the binny. When the leaf is far away from the edge of the field, the angle will be shallow, which means that radiation that takes only a short path through the jaw, so radiation that isn't much attenuated, will keep travelling this way past the jaw. But if the leaf is closer to the centre of the field, the angle at which radiation strikes its face will be steeper, so radiation that's able to pass through only a small portion of the jaw and still strike the patient doesn't move as far in this direction after it leaves the jaw. This means that the beam penumbra will be narrower closer to the center of the field, and wider further away. In order to avoid this problem, Varian and Electrolinax both use a rounded leaf tip. This means that no matter the angle at which radiation hits it, it will pass through the same thickness of leaf before it leaves. This reduces the dependence of penumbra size on leaf position, and also helps to minimize the size of the penumbra, since rounded leaves have no corners, which makes it more difficult for the beam to take short paths through the tip. Photons that would normally have formed part of the penumbra simply pass through and become part of the useful beam whereas those that pass even a small distance inside the leaf tip pass a large distance through the leaf and are attenuated. This allows us to produce a penumbra that's only around 1mm larger than if we use the focused leaf tip. But it does have the downside of allowing quite a bit of radiation to pass between opposing leaf tips, because their rounded shape offers only minimal shielding even if the tips aren't touching. This sort of design also makes the match between the Linac light field and radiation field a little less straightforward than if we use a focus tip. These problems could be avoided altogether if we use a double focused MLC instead. These used to be offered on the market by Siemens, but their line of linear accelerators has since been discontinued.